Hello everyone, this is Picks with the Professor. Today we're talking week five of the 2021 college football season. I'm your host, Professor Sides. You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Professor Sides. With me today are my co-host, Cousin Jared, who went seven and seven last week. That brings his season record to 28 and 19. That's a, that's a robust 60% there. Hello there, season leader, Cousin Jared. Uh, thank you. Good to be back. I'm glad to see that so far my down week is at 500. It, I, you know, if I can keep that up for the next few weeks, honestly, I'll be completely happy. 60%, uh, you know, doing really well. So just keep plugging along and try to stay about that 60% number. It'd be wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime you can go 50% as your down week, that is, uh, that's a good thing. All with us also is Jack went 4-0 last week to bring his season record to 9-7. and seven. Uh, Hello there to you. Uh, you know, week four winner. Yeah, hey, it, it is lonely at the top. <laughs> yes, four and zero in a week is pretty impressive. Uh, I, I, I would, model- I would, I would like to thank nothing but sheer luck for getting me to this point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know, well, it's the opposite of patting yourself on the back, right? Don't, don't do whatever that is. Um, my model picks uh, went 10, 14, and one last week. That brings my win loss record to sixty and sixty two on the season. Uh, maybe we'll rename this uh, podcast uh, "Picks with the Professor's Friends" because right now the two of you are doing so well. Uh, jokes aside that we will talk about the model and reasons for optimism about that uh, coming up shortly. But just a reminder, as always, the picks will be posted and tracked on Twitter, uh, the Google Sheet, all of my picks, including those for baseball, which has just been carrying my picks lately, um, and the NFL have their own Google Sheets. They are also tracked on BetStamp. If you're unfamiliar with BetStamp, it's a free bet tracking app that allows you to track your own bets and verify what other people are playing. Uh, so it's a really handy tool. Links are in the description below. If you enjoy the show, please like, subscribe, rate, leave a review. We truly appreciate all of those things. And we're going to kick things off with another round of the good, the bad, and the best about week four. Cousin Jared, I'm going to start with you. What was good about this last week of College of Bowl? So good thing for me, if you uh, were watching the Georgia State and Auburn game, you have a very good idea. Well, yeah. Great question. Like me. You're like me, you're watching it because you're holding the ticket with the over 57. And uh, with 43, 45 seconds left in the game, the total was sitting at 43. And again, I need an over 57. Somehow, in the last 45 seconds of that game, Auburn scores 15 points, and I get a miracle total of 58. I cannot imagine there being a more unlikely total being hit this entire season than those 15 points in the last 45 seconds of that game so so for me that was definitely the good thing from this weekend in college football yeah, uh, who are you thinking more auburn or georgia state for that one? Oh, that was definitely auburn i would say number one they had to score the touchdown uh the first touchdown and then the guy had to be you know, dumb enough to return it for a touchdown. I think I can't remember the exact context of the game, but yeah, it's definitely Auburn making plays for me there. Definitely appreciate them for that. If you had the under in that game, that is a top five bad beat of the season right there. It's September, but I feel confident in saying if you had the under there, that is a bad beat. I can't imagine one being worse. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty rough. Uh, Jack, what was good for you? Hey, three cheers for old Notre Dame. (laughs) That line was fishy when I first saw it, and I'm happy to see that that one paid off for me. Now, I think, obviously, the final score doesn't indicate how close that game was, but like once Notre Dame returned that kick in the second half, I was feeling really good about my chances of covering because not only was I holding on to points that my team was winning, and then, of course, Notre Dame piled it on at the end to make sure that I could just go to dinner happy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You know, I try to watch the intersection of what the games that are the most interesting that I'm going to learn the most from and the games that I've got plays on. So that one had my attention, of course. Notre Dame was the right side either way throughout that game. Mm -hmm. And then the and in the end just got ugly. I mean, like you said, the score was in no way indicative of how that game played out. It should have been a whole lot closer. I think Wisconsin might have actually outgained them in yards per play. Uh, based off of some of how the end played out, Notre Dame's quarterback going down. Yeah. Um, but but Notre Dame was the right side in that one. They were really in control of that game, and then the end just was a laugher. Um, uh, for me, what was good was the morning slate of games. Started off eight and two. Things were going really well early. The model was clicking, um, and so that was a lot of fun on Saturday uh, morning, afternoon. Uh, the model just just kicking tail early on. Uh, now to the bad cousin Jared. Uh, we'll start off with you. Buffalo, why are you going to do me like this? So that was one of the most confident picks I had last weekend. Uh, We talked about it 
uh, Old Dominion was one of the bottom teams in college football, maybe 120th out of about 127 teams or so. And I think Buffalo was laying about 13, 13 and a half points. I felt really good about it. Felt even better about it at halftime. Buffalo being ahead 35 to seven, uh, as Jack alluded to, I thought I was going to dinner happy, didn't have to keep up with anything. And then all of a sudden the wheels came off in the second half for Buffalo and they somehow managed to hang on and won by a single point. They won 35, 34. Um, so Buffalo, definitely the bad for me. What are you doing Buffalo? And did you see, and I'm going to tackle on a bonus bet is on the uh, celebration penalties with the refs. I'm not really sure. Do you think I'll see how that game ended? No. Old Dominion scores a late touchdown to get it to 35 34 they end up with a celebration penalty the extra point gets moved further back kicker misses the extra point wow. and buffalo wins 35 34 i mean that was a wonky wow. game with a, just a heartbreaking ending if wow. you're old and, and jared like you said buffalo escapes with the win but not the cover yeah. despite being two touchdowns ahead of the number uh, at, the, at the half uh, i'm with you that one that one definitely hurt uh, jack what about you what was uh, what was bad for you there wasn't a lot bad picks wise or rooting interest wise, but I will say four and um, will do that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Four and and your alma maters both win. And you, 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 you take that pretty well, but I will say I, I took that over in the Oklahoma state, Kansas state game. And, you know, through one quarter, I'm laughing 31 points, 44 at halftime. I only need 48. Like I'm going to coast into this thing in the third quarter. I'm going to blow this over out of the water. And, for the second week in a row, Oklahoma State throws up a scoreless second half. Um, it, it takes a pretty decent and unexpected touchdown drive from Kansas State to get me over the number. And so you, you wake up thinking, oh, oh, boy, that was that was really close. So wh- whatever halftime speech is being used in the locker room in Stillwater, it needs to yeah. add a line somewhere that says, hey, let's go score some points, guys, because we aren't doing that yet. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, like you said, e- looked easy, uh, hung on, but Oklahoma State offense not helping you out there in, I, the, in the second half. And I, I texted the professor about this, like, uh, I'm starting to get a little nervous here. <laughs> yeah, I had to I had to think, uh, so I, I texted back and I said, if the game doesn't go over, I was going to eat an entire sheet of paper on this podcast. I had to think of something that I could do, because at first I was going to say, like, I'm going to eat a boot or something. But then I was like, man, if this thing accidentally doesn't have any points, yeah. then what am I going to do? So I had to come up with something that, that was realistic. That would have been worth going three and one for. If, if I said boot, yeah, I think paper would have been less, but I was trying to come up with something quippy, you know, off the top of my head. Uh, for me, what was bad was the entire evening slate of games, as I mentioned, starting off eight and two and then completely falling apart. It wasn't just my model. I know a lot of other people's models had similar issues. Uh, some of us were on different ones, but it was just kind of everything went chaotic in the evening. Things fell apart. It was not pretty. It was it was maybe a, a word worse than bad. Um, but we're going to close out the segment with what was the best thing from this last weekend, cousin Jared. What was the best thing for this last weekend for you in college football? I felt like this weekend college football was really back. You know, obviously it's been going on for a month now, but on Saturday we had two top ten teams go down. We had a fifty six yard field goal as time expired in the Missouri game to send it to overtime. We had a Big Ten slugfest go to overtime with Nebraska throwing away the game again, which is exactly what I said was happening. We don't have to rehash that, but I knew that uh, the quarterback there would you know make a bad decision and, and you know cost Nebraska the game, which he did. Uh, overtime in Pac twelve after dark. Texas put up seventy. Duke and Kansas combined to score eighty five points. Oregon beat USC and LA for the first time since 1960 and a Sunbelt team almost beat an SEC team I'm sure I left something off of this list this is just some of the stuff that, that came top of mind um, so it was just college football doing college football things and, and it was just a, a wonderful Saturday of, of football yeah I definitely agree with that what about you Jack I completely agree like unless you're a fan of one of the teams that went down it was just a great weekend to be a fan of the yeah, sport yeah sorry yeah, Jared yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay <laughs> That's okay. I, 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 I cashed that Arkansas plus five and a half uh, ticket. So no, 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 no concern. Good, good, good play. Good, nice consolation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I have two alma maters that I pledge allegiance to. They both won their games. They both won their games against ranked opponents. So, um, and those watching the video of this can get some foreshadowing about what those two schools are based on the background I'm, I have behind me. So we'll talk right. more about that later. Right. Yeah. Little, little tease there. Uh, the best thing for me, or, or maybe the most reassuring thing, the, the model I think is in good shape going forward. The overall mean absolute error last week was 12.9, uh, 
for those of you who don't know what that means, what we did was we took, we, we take the error of how much each game misses. We take the absolute value. We don't really care which way it is. Take the average of that. 13 is your benchmark for good. Being below 13 is good. So I, I'm reassured that the model is in good shape. So to me, that was the, uh, maybe not best, but at least the most comforting thing is to say that I think the model's doing just fine. If it keeps performing the way it does, we're going to get a lot of winners coming forward. We just got to hold on. A lot of season left to go. So uh, I feel good about that. But before we move on to next week, we do have to discuss Clemson. I tweeted out my rankings. Clemson sitting number five. Who, who, who wants the layup? Because it's, it's right there. I mean... <laughs> Oh, professor, professor, I have a All question. Right. I have a All question. Right, All right. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah it, it is. It is a little puzzling. First off, remember that the rankings are not meant to be in any way, shape or form a resume. And this is not what they have done. This is trying to protect what they will do. Which, of course, leads to the interesting follow up. Have you seen Clemson? Why do you think they're going to do anything different? It, Clemson it, has scored five touchdowns against FBS opponents. Yeah. One of them is Georgia. So, like we talked about, we can give them a pass for that one. Yeah. I think we talked about this a little bit last week. We are still in a point where we're transitioning from preseason projections last year's data into this year's. What that exact perfect balance is no one actually knows. Right now, what I hate and, and trying to find what I think is the best system going forward, it leaves Clemson there. Maybe it's a miss on Clemson a little bit. If they keep doing this, they're going to continue to fall. But my question is, who should be ahead of them? Because I look at the rankings and you have Georgia and Alabama are by far the top two teams in the country. And then after that, everyone has holes to poke into them. My rankings have Ohio State number three, who lost at home. They have Oklahoma four, who almost lost at home to a West Virginia team that I really don't believe in. I, I don't know who else to put up there. And again, this isn't me putting in there. It's just what the model is. But if I just look at this objectively and try to say, who do I think is the best team going forward? I don't think it's Clemson, but I don't know who it is. This is a wonky college football season already. So I personally don't know who else you put up ahead of them. You know what I mean? I mean, I could I could list the teams that I think yeah, I would yeah, put, I, put ahead I, of them, I, but but I agree with you that especially and I think at this point the preseason projections haven't completely been phased out yet. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So I mean, with that in mind, you know, I, I think you're probably still spot on. But you're just looking at the rankings here. I'd probably put Florida ahead of them. I'd probably put Penn State ahead of them. I'd probably put Oregon ahead of them. Cincinnati, Arkansas. Uh, uh, those are the five that kind of come to mind, especially Arkansas. Like, uh, I think they have some some really good wins at this point, a win over a Texas team that's ranked ahead of them I, 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 somehow in, in this. Uh, I guess Texas really is back. Um, <laughs> oh, but, it's every month. Every month it comes back around, right? Yeah, yeah. But completely agree with the premise that, you know, this, this season seems to be more wide open than what we've remembered in the past. Uh, like I said, every team seems to have a, a pretty glaring flaw. I was yeah, really it, hoping you'd say Wake on that list. Wait, wait, yeah. <laughs> wake Forest just, is just really dig into the professor. Just, really, just go for yeah. it. Uh, and, and just to talk about some of those teams, though, because I just from the eye test, I agree with what you're saying. I think Arkansas is a really good team. They'll have their chance this week. If they put up a really good fight against Georgia and Clemson does not put up a good fight against Boston College, there's a decent chance that they, they hop up there because Arkansas has got you know, a lot on the line this week. Arkansas, of course, being hurt by the preseason projections where they were last year at some point. Uh, if we don't want to overreact, and, and maybe we are, maybe we should overreact a little bit to Arkansas, but I, I don't get, I don't go in there and manually react and overreact to each team. I just kind of let the overall take it. Uh, but you're right, Arkansas may be a little bit underrated in there. Uh, Penn State struggled last week against an FCS opponent. Not that Villanova isn't good. They are a good FCS team, but they, they struggled with them. Um, Oregon, uh, we talked about this previously, yeah. though, been yeah. outgained in yards per play in multiple of their games and hasn't really looked yep. as impressive as we thought they should. So, yeah, 24 19 in the fourth quarter against Arizona. Yeah. That's bad, right? Arizona, who lost to Northern yeah. Arizona, I'm probably going to go one yeah. less. So, again, it goes back to it's, it's, you can really pick holes in everybody this year, except for, of course, Georgia and Alabama. Yeah. And so, I think that'll change as we move forward. I think give it a few more weeks and we will be able to pick maybe just one hole in a team, but they will have such a strong resume that we'll, we'll fill it a bit, a bit better. If not, it'll be total chaos and that'll be also fun to talk about. I mean, well. I want to chastise the analytics people for being reliant so much on their priors on week five of the season, but I'm not sure I can refute it either. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's of course, an interesting debate and should it be quite this strong or not is, is up for debate. Um, but, you know, it's where we have them right now. Uh, I said last week, if they don't play well, they'll drop and they didn't. And I think that was partially because the teams around them didn't look good. Other teams got closer to them but could not jump them. So I, I said it last week and I was wrong. I'll say it this week. If they put up a stinker, someone will pass them this week. <laughs> and hopefully that'll be true uh, yeah. because hopefully some of the teams around them will look good, but you never know. Like you said, last week was a little bit of chaos. If there's more chaos this week, maybe the same thing will happen. Whichever team yeah. goes backwards, the slowest will be fifth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, moving on to this week, as usual, all lines courtesy of Circa Sportsbook, we're going to deep dive into four games. First one, a big one, Cincinnati at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is uh, getting two and a half points at home, total of 50. Jared, what do you got? I was watching the fourth quarter of the Notre Dame-Wisconsin game, and, and Jack, you alluded to, they took the lead, and then they just kind of poured it on there in the fourth quarter. And the entire time I was just thinking, I want more of this. I want more of this. I want more points from Notre Dame because I was thinking if I can get Cincinnati um, with, you know, getting points in South Bend, I was going to jump on it as fast as I possibly could. And I was a little bit surprised when, when I first saw the line anyway, uh, Cincinnati was favored by one or one and a half, something like that. So it, it looks like all that piling on in the fourth quarter wasn't quite enough to, to catch the points that I was hoping to get with, with Cincinnati. Um, that being said, I alluded to this last week about the Wisconsin uh, Notre Dame game when I had questions about both teams. I, I, I still have questions about Notre Dame after the win at Wisconsin, uh, but I, I'm still not completely sold on Cincinnati yet. I think Cincinnati is very good, but can they go uh, into South Bend and beat Notre Dame? I'm, I'm not sure. So I talked to myself out of taking the points last week. I'm going to talk myself into taking the points this week. Um, I think two and a half is, is plenty for me uh, for Notre Dame at home. Uh, I want Cincinnati to have that dream season because of all the things we just talked about. I think it would be very difficult to leave them out of the playoff based on, you know, some of, like I said, the glaring weaknesses some of the other teams have displayed Absolutely. so far this year. Absolutely. And so I really want that to happen. But Notre Dame just, it's kind of been their MO for the whole Brian Kelly era, they sometimes just find ways to win these games that, that not saying they don't have any business in being in, in those games, but they just, just find a way. So getting points at home uh, against, even though, how, you know, Cincinnati is really good. I'm, I'm just taking the points with, with Notre Dame here. I think it's too good to pass up. That makes a lot of sense. What about you, Jack? I think that really depends on which Cincinnati team comes off of the bus in South Bend, because They've had some uncharacteristically slow starts in their past couple of games. I think they went to halftime against Murray State tied. They started similarly slowly against Indiana before eventually putting that game away. I don't think they could survive a similar slow start against Notre Dame because they can't rely on that comeback metric against a team that, like Jared alluded to, can figure it out in the second half. Um, Get, given what we've seen from Cincinnati so far, um, it seems like it makes sense to take the points here. Um, but just I am too scared of Cincinnati of what they've shown us so far. I can't really make a determination either way. Right. I'm uh, I'm taking the points uh, along with Jared on Notre Dame. So official play for me, I'm taking plus two and a half. The model says this should be Notre Dame minus one and a half. That means I have Cincinnati as the better team. I have them ranked about five spots ahead of Notre Dame. I think they are the better team. Uh, but I don't understand how Cincinnati is favored on the road at Notre Dame. This line just blows my mind. I, I'm kind of like you, Jared. I really expected there to be this Notre Dame bias. I expected there to be this, we don't mm -hmm. believe in Cincinnati, but believe in the small school. If you asked me what this line would be, I would have guessed Notre Dame minus four. I would have said people would give wow. Notre Dame three points for home, even though that's not really, we typically use more like two and a half for your standard home edge in, in college football. I would have said people would have given them three and then people would have said Notre Dame's a better team. Look what they just did. I just was assuming that this would be Notre Dame minus three and a half minus four. The fact that it's Cincinnati minus two and a half blows my mind yeah. I, I don't uh, it's, get it whatsoever it's, it's to some degree a repeat of what happened with the wisconsin line last week like i thought notre dame was going to be favored in that game too right and may, maybe it, maybe that's it maybe i think that people give notre dame a lot of respect and they aren't anymore maybe maybe we gave notre dame too much respect for decades and now we finally no. realize that they aren't that good i don't in know my, in my case i was hitting on wisconsin so i don't think it says anything Same, about notre true. dame 
True. Yeah. <laughs> True. But yeah, this line really surprised me. Like I said, I, I think that Cincinnati should be a small, uh, is, is, is very small, much amount better than Notre Dame. Uh, but Notre Dame should be a small favorite. So I am taking the points with Notre Dame. Obviously, I'd love a field goal, but I don't see the line getting there personally. Uh, so I'm just going to take the two and a half and be happy on that one. Uh, next up, Baylor at Oklahoma State. Uh, Baylor game of the week for this podcast. Game of the week yeah. for this podcast. <laughs> Oklahoma State is a four-point favorite. Total of 49 and a half. Not a lot. Not a high total again in an Oklahoma State game. Uh, Jack, I'm going to let you kick this one off. Uh Talk, talk about your flag in the background. So, so, so I have I have what I pr- refer to as dual citizenship between Baylor and Oklahoma State. I have degrees from both. Um, pro tip, if you ever have a chance to have multiple degrees from multiple schools in the same conference, don't because it makes <laughs> the game very difficult because you have to think about, okay, who needs this more and who do I want to offend the least? And, and, that, and that's where the Swiss flag behind me comes in. I am I am not foolish enough to take an official side and alienate half of my friends on a recorded podcast. Um, Nevertheless, I have the aforementioned concerns about Oklahoma state. I don't, that, that, that total that the professor pointed out better be a first half total because at at the Oklahoma state space, they're going to offer zero in the second half. And you cannot do that against this Baylor team. You could barely do it against Tulsa, Boise state, Kansas state, like if you give Baylor the chance, they will actually put this game away. And, and of course, uh, before we go to you, Jared, I, I feel like we've got vibes of Kirk Herbstreit right here. One of those, uh, no official pick on the game, but give us your keys to the keys to success here or something, right? I feel like that's kind of the role that yeah. you're playing right now, Jake. <laughs> what, are the, what are your keys to success in this game? <laughs> Points. Points. Points are the keys. Points, yeah, that's true. If you, if you do that better than your opponent, you probably will win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just someone please score some second half points. I'm tired of watching 30 minute football games. There you go. Jerry, do you, uh, you want to add anything to that? I obviously I don't keep up with these two teams as, as much as you all do, but I just feel like I know what I'm getting with Baylor so far this year and Oklahoma state. And it's, I feel like it's been this way since Sanders has been the quarterback. I, I don't know what I'm getting week to week. I, at first, I was a little bit scared off of this game being in Stillwater, um, but I think the the variability of the Oklahoma State team, I think it's just kind of too much to ignore. So official play for me, I'm taking the four points with with Baylor in Stillwater. They've been running the ball so well. Uh, I, I just think, yeah, if Oklahoma State does anything near what they've been doing and just kind of come out real slow in the second half, it, you know, that's not going to work against Baylor. So uh, I'm, I'm taking the four points with Baylor here. I'm taking the four points as well. Uh, a play with the model, not with the heart. I have this as OSU minus one. That does imply I do have Baylor about two and a half points better on a neutral field. As you guys talked about, there's a lot of variability with Oklahoma State. The model thinks on average Baylor is a better team. Obviously, we don't know what Oklahoma State team is going to show up for the first half or the second. But in general, this Baylor team is not getting the respect they deserve. Again, this has nothing to do with me going there. This is just uh, objectively speaking from the metrics, they have become very, they've, be, they've been a very efficient team overall. They, they looked a little bit weak in the second half. Last week against Iowa State, kind of scary a little bit, but that first half was fantastic. Offensive line play, just so much improved from last year. Last year, what didn't matter which quarterback was in, just straight running for his life. This year, the offensive line's played a lot better. So official pick for me, Baylor, plus four, as I think that should be pretty close to a pick home there, even though Baylor has historically not done well in Stillwater. To be fair, not many teams have done well in Stillwater. I mean, that, that's not true recently. I mean, it, we're a long ways away from Robert Griffin's house of horrors. That's Well, they, they, and they still had a couple after that, I, I feel like, that they lost. But yeah, they, they, they've, they've gotten off the schneid there. There was some crazy 0-12 or something. Uh, start off with, and they, they have one there recently, but uh, tough place to play still water for sure. But I, this is not one of the better Oklahoma state teams. Uh, and this is actually a solid Baylor team. So I like getting four points there. Oklahoma state absolutely might win by a field goal, but that gets us to the window. Next up, another big game. Michigan is a one point favorite at Wisconsin total. We talked about low totals. This one's 43 and a half, almost an NFL total here in this game. Uh, Jared, what is your analysis on this game? My analysis on this game, and, and this has kind of been out there in a lot of the college football publications, so uh, yeah, I'll admit it's not an original thought, but with Michigan this year, 
I think this has been the game that everybody's been waiting for to see is Michigan does Michigan have it turned around because the past few years playing Wisconsin has just been a bloodbath. I mean, Michigan has just been rocked to their core against Wisconsin the past, past couple of years. Um, in their defense, I don't think this is the same Wisconsin team that they've had trouble with in the past. That being said, I, I just can't bring myself to, to make a play on this game. Um, I don't know why I didn't take the points with Rutgers last week. The the first, I think, real test that Michigan had, they played Washington, but, you know, ad nauseum on this podcast, you know, Washington can't score points. Plus Pac-12 is, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's drunk. Um, but, you know, I, I just – I thought Rutgers was the first test. Michigan won that game, but it, it was it was not pretty. They almost completely stopped moving the ball in the second half. Um, even as poor as Wisconsin, poorly as Wisconsin has played this year, just going and I, it, this is at Camp Randall, isn't it? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just I I can't bring myself to lay points with Michigan here, even though I think that Wisconsin's playing badly. So this is, this is definitely a stay away from me, but I do think we're going to learn a lot about Michigan on Saturday. Yep. What do you got, Jack? This is a, one of the, it must be October because we're getting into those classic noon Eastern kickoff, big 10 games where you could basically sleep through the first half if you're on mountain time and not miss much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, at what point is Wisconsin going to get this thing figured out? If, if it's not now, like yeah, the, the the schedule gets easier, but then they basically have nothing to play for. Yeah, because you'll you'll expect Penn State to do well. Michigan's probably going to win a few more games. Iowa's still on the schedule. Like this is is this put up or shut up time for Wisconsin? I, that was the phrase that actually entered my mind as, as you're talking about this. I, I hadn't really thought too much about that from Wisconsin's standpoint, but you're right. I mean, Penn State, Notre Dame, now Michigan, three big games early on. If it's not, if not now, then when? Yeah, yeah, and. And maybe maybe an old friend like Michigan, a team that they have beaten up on in recent years, might be the cure here to their ills. But gosh, I don't want to bet on it. Literally, I don't want to bet on this. <laughs> Please, am, someone else talk about this game. <laughs> yes, I, I'm laying the one point here. Uh, this might be my favorite play of the week. Um, and you're laying the one point with Michigan here. Laying the one point Michigan. Um, my model makes this Michigan minus four and a half. Like I said, if I had to pick one play to make, I think this is the play. I, I don't understand this line whatsoever. I, I get that the game's in Wisconsin. I'm usually the one saying, are you forgetting where this is at? Are you factoring home field? Stuff like that. I think people are betting with their hearts. People are betting whatever. This line makes zero sense to me. This is not the same Michigan team that struggled with Wisconsin in the past. Y'all mentioned it's not the same Wisconsin team. I think we all know that. It's also not the same Michigan team. We have not seen a Michigan team demolish some of their opponents with regards to the efficiency they've had this year as they've had in the past. In the past, we've had these Michigan teams who put it together for maybe a half, but overall it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. This year's Michigan team is actually playing better. And it's one of those things where when you dive deep into those numbers, yes, they struggled with Rutgers in the second half. They looked a lot better in the first half. But when you look at the totality of their work, teams that are that efficient against opponents of that caliber tend to play well against good teams. Obviously, we don't know. We'll find out a little bit more this Saturday. But we have enough historical data that says if you blow out decent teams, which they have done, that bodes really well for you. And Michigan in the past has kind of struggled in the regard. Or if they've won big, it's been smoke and mirrors and hasn't been quite as methodical as it's been so far this year. This isn't the same Michigan team as those past teams. And as you guys covered, this is not the same Wisconsin team as some of those past teams. They're talking on the broadcast this last week about, you know, did, um, you know, did Wisconsin choose the right quarterback? And obviously the team wasn't listening to that, but you know, the team had that thought in their head staring yeah. across the sideline at the other guy. Yep. I mean, this could get ugly in my opinion. And obviously it totals 43. It probably will be ugly, but this could easily be a 24 to three kind of just ugly game where Wisconsin barely shows up. It could be a 31 seven kind of game. Obviously, it might be closer, but like I said, this is my favorite play of the week. I just think Michigan is a much better team here. Even on the road, I have no worries laying the points there. I, I Laying the I one think, point. It's basically a pick em. Yeah, I, I think you you may have hit on a little bit. The only way that maybe I could be swayed to back Michigan on this game is 
Wisconsin's quarterback play has been so bad. Like Mertz has, has not been good at, at all. And I, I'm, I'm definitely not going to sit here and say that Michigan has a quarterback that's off the charts. He's not, but I, Mertz has shown that he will throw plenty of interceptions and, and have plenty of turnovers where he can give this game away. And in a game with, like you said, a low total like this, you know, those turnovers could easily be the difference. So that may be the easiest way to sway me on this is just the Wisconsin quarterback play has been really bad. It, it really has. It really has. So I'm official pick taking Michigan minus one. And it's basically a pick them there. Still worry about lining the point. To me, the craziest line of the week right there. Another Michigan school, Western Kentucky at Michigan State. This total, or this, excuse me, this, uh, this line is Michigan State minus 10. That is the line that we locked in uh, playing it. It's already out by the time we're recording this, out to 11 and a half, if that tells you guys anything total much more respectable 62 and a half i'll let you kick us off jared i at first i was hesitant on this game i was thinking that uh michigan coming off the uh you know the win against miami and the win against nebraska and overtime oh, yes yeah michigan state excuse me michigan state Michigan's win against busy. miami yeah yeah uh the michigan state win against miami um coming back home with overtime win against nebraska classic letdown spot here and when I saw the score of the Western Kentucky game uh, last week, uh, Indiana only beat them 33-31. And so I was thinking, hey, Western Kentucky, a little, a little bit feisty here. Um, but when I dug a little bit deeper into that Western Kentucky game, it was a, a, a lot of luck that, that contributed to that. Uh, Western Kentucky uh, forced Indiana to kick four field goals in that game. Indiana should have had a, a at least – 45 points in that game easily. Um, so it is a little bit smoke and mirrors in, in that respect. I also think that Michigan State uh, along, you know, along the offensive line and defensively are, are much better than Indiana is. So I, I've come around official play for me. I'm going to lay the 10 points with Michigan State at home here. I think they're just um, too good. And, and that Western Kentucky playing Indiana close last week. Um, I, I don't think the score really reflected how that game went. And, and let me add there, I, I'm with you there. I think that was a lot of smoke and mirrors. Just as a quick educational piece, if you're unaware, the bend but don't break defense is not sustainable. Uh, the fact that they, they and statistically speaking, I'm not saying just from a like, I'm making a joke, right? Statistically yeah. speaking, you hold a team to that many field goals, but you give up a ton of yards is not something that is going to project forward. That's going to be a situation where if you continue to do that in the long term, you're going to force some field goals. You're going to give up a lot more touchdowns. It's really difficult to do that. It's not a, it's not a skill. The bending but not breaking is not a skill. Uh, good defense is a skill. And, and up, half of our audience. Possible. And half of our audience has just nodded sadly and stepped up to go get another beer out of the fridge. <laughs> Cause we know, we know the bend and don't break is a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. But Baylor defense tried that uh, a long time ago and it, it, it just slowly just meant the other team was going to eventually score most of the time. <laughs> Jack, what do you got for us on this game? So when this line came out, I was like, okay, I am clearly missing something because I mean, Michigan state, actually has done pretty well against some decent opponents, um, Western Kentucky less so. Um, to add on to what Jared was talking about with the Indiana game, I think a better explanation to that score is that maybe Indiana just isn't as good as we thought they would be at the start of the year. Completely possible. <laughs> yeah. These yeah. are to a later segment where we talk about Indiana Penn State. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so, and, and that's going to be correlated with some of the picks you'll get from me tonight. I'm, I'm actually going to make an official pick here and lay the points as well. I, I don't see this game being that close. Yeah, I agree with you from a personal standpoint. The model agrees with you as well. The model says 17 and a half is what this number wow. should be. That is quite a difference. Like I said, this number's already gotten out there a little bit. If it continues to climb, you'll listen to this later in the week lay the points. I cannot see this line getting to a point where I would not recommend laying it. If it gets a 14 and a half, I like the edge a lot less there, but that's quite a jump. Even at 14, I think Michigan state is the play here. Yeah. They're a much better team. It's it, it, Michigan state runaway candidate for team. I was the most wrong about this year. There, there had to be one congrats. I think it's Michigan state. Uh, I, I doubted them and they continue to play really well week after week, as we already talked about, I've, I've eaten crow I'm probably every week at this point. I, I, I'm, I'm leaning into it here. Michigan State, by far the better team, laying 10 points is the easy decision. Like I said, lay 11 and a half, lay 13, lay 13 and a half, lay 14. I think Michigan State runs away with this game. 
and I, I say this not sarcastically. I, I would be a little bit concerned about um, the next game for Michigan State against Rutgers if Rutgers were not playing Ohio State this week. Right, so, right. So they are a tad distracted on their own too. Right, and to some extent, you 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 hope that you're not looking ahead to Rutgers, right? I know the Rutgers is better, but it's not like if it's I, Michigan next week, if it's Ohio State next week, okay, let's talk about look ahead I mean, spot, let down, sandwich game, right? It, but but if Western Kentucky is the team in front of you, you could in theory look to a three and one Rutgers. Potentially, potentially. I mean, that is the contrarian angle, but yeah, it's not mm-hmm. something I'm, I'm too worried about here. Michigan State just should out-talent them enough at this point to run away with that one. And then this is for the games we're going to deep dive. We're going to move into the rapid fire one-liners. Some of these may be more than one-liners, but we're going to try to keep it uh, short and simple on these games as much as we can. Uh, We're starting off with a Thursday game here, Virginia at Miami. Miami is a four point favorite. Jared. As you alluded to earlier, ACC has seemed insane. Um, I'm not, playing this game by any means but i think with the acc maybe the safest thing to do is just take points like just take the points in every game and like surely that will be a winning strategy because nothing else seems to produce a winning strategy with the acc right now not a bad idea Uh, especially on a thursday especially on a thursday thursday night game here i make this miami minus seven and a half so i'm taking miami there are concerns about king's status I'm not that concerned because I think anybody can score on this Virginia defense. So I'm laying the four points with Miami, given how bad Virginia's defense looked. Although, Jared, I don't, yeah. I don't think your idea is crazy about just taking points and saying, I have no yeah. idea what's happening in this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. again, the model really likes Miami here. Quarterback issues aside, for me, Miami minus four is the play. Have some uh, Friday games, Iowa at Maryland. Iowa is a three-point favorite for the lines that we locked in. I've noticed it is already out to four and a total, another low total here of 46. This might be a Friday night snooze fest here. Uh, Jerry, what do you got? This this line seems strange to me. All right, please, sir. Too. <laughs> please, sir. Can I have some points? <laughs> can I please have some points? Yeah, 46. I don't think you're going to get very many of them. Yeah, so play for me, Maryland plus three. Yeah, yeah, Professor, I think you were going there. Like, what brings you to this play? Yeah, so uh, the model has soured a little bit on Iowa. It really liked Iowa based off what they did last year. It liked the way Iowa started out, but there was a little bit of smoke and mirrors there. They were outgained by Iowa State. It was able to look past that. Uh, But when you last week, they did not look good at all. The week before, we got the cover with Iowa. Uh, but it didn't look good. So it just, as the season's gone along, it continues to say, Iowa just has not looked as good this year as they did last year. So this is another one of those situations mm-hmm. where we talked about with Clemson earlier. The, the model kind of soured maybe a week earlier on Iowa than Clemson. Maybe Clemson's turns next week. But after last week, I think was kind of the final straw for Iowa where it just hasn't quite got there yet for Clemson. But yeah, it just does mm-hmm. not really respect what Iowa has done. And it loved them early based off of last year's ending. But now it's kind of saying, this isn't that good. At Maryland, I, Maryland getting three points at likes that the model says it should be a pick up here. The Iowa's a better team, but not by that much. I mean, and Iowa's two marquee wins have both soured in recent weeks as well. Also a very good point to, yeah. to add in there that that the model takes all that into consideration. So Iowa State looking worse as well on the Iowa's not as good. So I tweeted about that a little bit too this this weekend about how all these things inter, interplay with each other. Another Friday game, uh, a Friday night after dark, 8 p.m. Central kickoff, a BYU who is a seven and a half point favorite at Utah State. Jared. Uh, I mean, if BYU is going to keep printing money for us, then yeah, let's do it. Uh, official play for me here. I'm laying the seven and a half points with BYU. I feel like we just saw this game last week, at Boise State and Utah State, and that one wasn't close. I, I don't know why this line's only seven and a half. Go, go watch your high school team play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I beg to differ. I think watch this one. Watch BYU run all over them. I'm with you, Jared. The model says yeah. minus 13. I don't get it either. Utah State is not that good. BYU uh, trying to defend their Pac-12 championship here uh, as the season rolls along. BYU is the better play. Don't be afraid about laying the hook here. Um, I'm with you. If BYU is going to print money for us, let's just do it. I don't yeah. quite – it, it makes zero sense to me. Yeah. Saturday games. 
Syracuse at Florida State. Florida State, even at home, is a five-point favorite. Man, I, um, I, I came really close to taking Syracuse here. Uh, it, it's a no play for me. I, I keep thinking that the talent that Florida State has is at some point going to just do, like, just be average. Like, not even be good, just be right. average. They don't, um, need, they don't need to be good in this game. They just need to be average. And, and, and yeah, and, and so I, I just – I can't bring myself to, to take five points with Syracuse on the road in Tallahassee. But, uh, we, man, Florida State's just it's, – it's, it's bad. It is bad. I think all I can say is ugh. <laughs> I mean, this game is going to be ugly. Um, are the fans in Tallahassee going to care at this point? The season's basically I, over. I, yeah, I don't think they do. I've got this at Florida State minus one and a half. I am taking the five with Syracuse officially. I almost took Louisville last week. I was very close to doing it. I think there was a tweet out there where I mentioned this. Uh, if you go back in the archives that I was close to taking Louisville, this was before the game started. Just couldn't do it. So I'm kind of, I'm a week uh, ahead of you, Jared. Um, mm. that's where I was last week. I just, I, you know, I was like, I, I, two weeks ago, I took Florida state and I said, this is their season and right. they didn't do it. And the model kind of aligned with that last week. It was really moving hard against them. And last week, it, the model just couldn't quite get there after last week, the model has gotten there. Syracuse is not great, but Florida state should not be a five point favorite at home to anybody, clearly, even Jacksonville State. So, yes, I will take the five points with Syracuse. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> next one, thank you. Uh, yeah. Next up, uh, speaking of disappointing teams, this is a perfect segue, Clemson at home. <laughs> We've already talked about them ad nauseum. We talk about them every week. They're going to be the, the, the poster child for this podcast. Clemson at home against Boston College. Clemson is a 16-point favorite, another total of 46-and-a-half. It's almost like we got ugly weather November football here with some of these low totals. Jerry, yeah. what do you got? I think I mentioned it last week that we may we might have a very small window to, you know, before Vegas catches up to Clemson for us to kind of you know get in on this. I, I can't I can't believe they're getting uh, 16 points here. Uh, official play for me, I'm taking the 16 points with Boston College, unless you're telling me that you know I mean who who's Clemson going to score 21, 24 points on you know I, I just i don't see it happening so i'm i'm taking the 16 points of boston college here yeah this is the play i'm going to regret not making next week i i agree with you jack i'm not taking it either but i think you're right i think this is the play i'm going to regret not making as well the model says 16 the model spot on as we already talked about the model probably a little too high on clemson the thing about clemson and they will not talk about clemson the rest of the show they have the talent, they have the schemes, they've got everything there. When they figure it out, it's going to go crazy if they figure it out. I guess it's gone from when to if now. The model's playing the averages right now. So the model is saying, on average, they've got some of that potential, they haven't showed it. So the model says, on average, Clemson wins by 16. I think there's no way Clemson wins by 16. I think Clemson either wins by 35 or they win by three. And so this is one of those where the variability to me is through the roof. I'm not playing it, but I'm like you, Jack. I think this is a game I'm going to regret not playing because uh, Clemson just hasn't figured it out yet. Congratulations. I think Clemson, by, yeah. I think Clemson by three is much more likely than Clemson by three. Yeah, congratulations in advance, Jared. Yeah. I, I can't I can't believe after after last week, and I think the model was even on NC State last the week. The model was on NC State last week, and, and I, was all, I followed it. Yeah, I, I, I can't, a can't much believe better guys. Team. NC State's a much better team than Boston College. The quarterback situation. Yeah. It, who looked who looked yeah. okay last week, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. So yeah. I, you still need to get to 16. And I don't think Clemson can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Army uh, is a seven point favorite at ball state. Jared. So I, I I should have listened to you guys. Y'all were both so confident about Army last week. It wasn't a bet that I made. I should have I'm not making that same mistake twice. Um, official play from me. I am laying the seven points with Army. Jack. Seconded. Um, <laughs> Army, I love taking Army against teams that can't defend the run, and this is another one of those cases. Official pick for me, Army all the way. Let's make it three. Army minus seven is the play. The model says 14 and a half. I can't understand why Army is not getting any respect. These lines are dumb. We profited last week. I think we're going to profit again. I know it's on the road, but Ball State isn't very good. Army is just going to run all over them. So Shout-outs to, shout to Army who went 
Shout out to Army who went over five passing last week. <laughs> and it didn't matter, right? No, so and they won. They and they covered. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Speaking of teams in the Hoosier State, Hoosiers at Penn State. Penn State is a 10 and a half point favorite. We already kind of talked about this, alluded to it a little bit earlier. Uh, again, Penn State is a 10 and a half point favorite at home. Jared, what do you got? Uh, no play for me on this game, but as time has gone on, I the wheels have kind of been turning in my head. Uh, victories over, you know, Wisconsin and Auburn. What do we really know about Penn State at this point? Just, just something that's been kind of going through my mind. Yep. Yep. Check. Well, you may not have a whole lot of body of evidence on Penn State. I don't know if they would be one of those teams we put above Clemson, but I would certainly put them way above Indiana at this point. Official yeah. pick for me. I'll take I'll take Penn State and lay the points on this one. I'm still not convinced that Indiana can actually like put up a game against a team with a pulse on I mean, the road on or well yes or or at home with the exception <laughs> of cincinnati spotting them that first half slow start right right i'm with you i'm also laying the 10 and a half the model says it should be 16 and a half jerry to make a good point i don't really know what to make a penn state that's why they can't that's why they're not higher in my rankings right. um i was talking to someone else uh, this weekend about if penn state should be higher i i, I don't i just don't know enough about them Indiana, though, has really been a disappointment. I don't think they're in the same class as Penn State on the road. I don't think that game is close. I'd rather lay 10 if you can get it. Uh, I'm locking in the 10 and a half just because I'd rather lay 10 and a half and 11. So at this, that 10 and a half number kind of can go either way. So lay the 10 and a half. Uh, my model thinks it's a six point difference there. Memphis at Temple. The total in this game is 61. Jared. I official play for me. I am taking the under 61 here. I feel like Memphis, Memphis's offense specifically has been smoke and mirrors all season now. Uh, I think we put a lot of stock when they beat Arkansas State, you know, what was it, 45 or 46 41 or 46 42, something where we were 46 41, where we pushed on the model, pushed on the five right, uh, right. earlier this season. Arkansas State has like one of the worst defenses that's not named UConn that I can remember. Um, and you know, they needed some questionable officiating calls and some special teams luck to beat Mississippi State. They only scored 31 that game. Uh, and they got out to an early big lead against UT San Antonio and then just could not do anything offensively the rest of the game. Um, so long way of saying Memphis's offense, I think, is really overrated. So I'm locking in the under 61 here. Oh, I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch other games to get my under fix. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of those. I... Almost took Memphis last week against UTSA. Regretted not taking them early when they got up to that lead. And then they just stalled, lost the game outright. Yeah. So I was glad that I stayed away from Memphis last week. Um, they're a puzzling team for me. Uh, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Air Force at New Mexico. Air Force is a 10-point favorite. Jared. Official play for me. I'm laying the 10 points with Air Force here. The only team that's given Air Force any trouble this year was Utah State. And because that's that's because Utah State can – chuck the ball around the field, air it out a lot. New Mexico cannot air the ball out. So, uh, yeah, there will be no issues with that. Uh, I would be surprised if there's very many passes combined in this game. Um, so no problems here laying the 10 points with Air Force. This line almost qualifies as fishy, but it's not quite there. No analysis on the game for me here. But I, speaking of air, I think the elevation in Albuquerque is higher than the elevation in Colorado State in Colorado Springs. I'll have to look that up, but I don't think altitude will make a difference in this game at all. <laughs> I don't think it will either. Like I said, not a lot of passes in this one. I am laying the 10 with air force as well. The model says 12 and a half. New Mexico is bad. I took them last week. I regretted it. I'm not making that same mistake twice. I think air force is the play here. USC at Colorado. USC is a seven point favorite. What, do, what does anybody make of USC at this point? Yeah, uh, all, all I was going to say is if anybody thinks they know anything about USC, I'm all ears. <laughs> I think I'm going to stick to something. I, I'm going to stick on. I'm going to stick to something I know. Um, both both towns, Albuquerque and Colorado Springs, <laughs> <laughs> are higher than a mile above sea level, but Colorado Springs is higher. So I was wrong right. about that. All right. That's honestly maybe the best analysis of USC, Colorado, you're going to hear this week, folks. Uh, I have no idea what to make of USC. 
uh, Slovis was good and then he wasn't good because defenses kind of made him work for it a little bit. So his numbers regressed, but he's still okay. Then he got hurt. The backup was better. The backup got hurt. Slovis is back in. I don't know about them. What I do know is Colorado is bad. I took Colorado last week. I regretted it. I'm not making that mistake twice. The model says USC minus 12 here. On average, I think USC kills them. You never know what you're going to get for USC. So high variability game, not a game that uh, you should you know double your bets on. You should not double your bets on any Pac-12 game whatsoever. But on average, USC is a much better team than Colorado because Colorado is just as really bad. I modal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, speaking of Pac-12, uh, 2.30 Central kick on ABC Orc and their chance to shine. Minus eight at Stanford. Jared. It, it, I mean, we said it, we said it last week. We, we didn't think it was going to be applicable to the Arizona game, but like Oregon can't come around, come out and mess around. Um, Stanford more than maybe any other team they've played besides Ohio state it could potentially make them pay for that. So uh, no play for, for me on this game, but I, 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 I want to see Oregon. <laughs> like we talked about how crazy the Pac-12 is. I want Pac-12 to get a good team in the playoffs. Like it's, it's finally about time they, they get one in. I want, we're going to come out and just put Stanford away. Uh, but I don't, I haven't seen anything that makes me think they, they can, you know, they can do that quickly. Yeah. Well, we, no one should take Stanford lightly considering we've lost a coach over them already this year. Yeah, it just comes true. down to whether Oregon can actually do it. That's true. I don't think Oregon will lose a coach, but that's a good point that you made there. Uh, official play from the Oregon minus eight, the model says minus 12. Uh, my analysis on this game is I am, fascinated to watch it i don't know what to make of either one of these teams i mentioned earlier oregon i don't believe in them the model doesn't really believe in them that much either because of the way they've played uh stanford looks better now with the new quarterback uh i've built that into the model uh, but it still thinks oregon should be a big favorite so i'm laying the eight i'm trusting the model this is one of those hashtag trust the process kind of plays just from a my eye standpoint i have no idea what to expect from this game no idea what to expect from the pac-12 in general so I'm trusting the model. I'm laying the eight. I'm I'm fascinated to watch this game. I think anything can happen here. Bowling Green at Kent State. Uh, Kent State is a 17 point favorite. Jared, I I I'm, I was shocked at this line. I I wanted to take Kent State. I told myself if it got below two touchdowns, I was going to take Kent State. I thought that. Surely there's going to be a lot of overreaction after Bowling Green beat Minnesota last week. And in my opinion, the overreaction wasn't there. I, I've, I've been kind of befuddled by this line. So I, I'm not playing anything here. I want to Kent State can't believe that I can't get them at less than two touchdowns. Uh, imagine what the line would have been if Bowling Green lost that game. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. Um, my model says Kent State minus 11. Bowling Green 4-0 against the spread this year. Let's make it 5-0. and I'm taking Bowling Green plus 17. Wow. They aren't that bad. They proved it last week. Good teams win. Great teams Great cover. Teams cover. Yeah. Bowling Green's gotten us to the window a few times already this season. I don't know why you would do anything different. I'm not – this is not a – I'm going to find all the teams who are playing well and we're going to back them. That's not the case at all. Um, right. This is just a situation where Bowling Green, um, I don't think they're getting the respect they deserve. Um, sometimes this happens in college football. You notice this every year. There's teams that start off seven and zero, and the numbers don't adjust. Eight and zero, the numbers don't adjust. They haven't adjusted to Bowling Green. Um, I'm kind of like you. If this was Kent State minus thirteen, you, you might have taken Kent State. I would have laid off at that point. I would have said that's right. pretty fair. It's close enough. I'm, I'm not touching it either way. I, I don't care that Bowling Green is covered four straight because they the numbers adjusted. The number hasn't adjusted yet. So I like especially getting seventeen. I really like this uh, play right here. Back to more interesting football uh, off of our one game weird detour there. Ole Miss at Alabama. Alabama is a 15 point favorite, a total guy 78. So points might happen in this one. This one might be a lot of fun. Jared. Uh, sir, the total of 80 is widely available out okay. there. Uh, okay. I, I, I saw that number and I was like, guys, guys, I'm, I'm taking the under here. Um, but I will, since I'm talking with two statisticians here, does anybody, I want both of you to take a guess at what the total number of points scored in last year's matchup between these two teams, what the total point scored was. 78. 
I don't remember last year's game at all. I know that Ole Miss and Alabama have played some wonky, like 63 to 40 type games. So, I mean, if you told me 100, I wouldn't be surprised. What if I told you it was 111? Yeah, I'm not. Was, that's why I said, like, man. Yeah. 63 to 48. Um, I almost said 63 to 46, too. I said 40. You know, I've, I've been pretty, pretty good about yeah, that. Yeah, 63 48. Um, yeah. I, I, like I said, I wanted to take the under. I, I think I, I know Alabama's offense is, is not nearly as good as it was last year. I, I think Alabama's defense is a little bit better than it was last year, but man, there's, there's no amount of change that could, you know, <laughs> it's not a 31 point swing, yeah, I guess is what I'm getting at there. Right. So, uh, yeah, staying away from from me here. If this total gets somewhere crazy, it's been going up and up and up. It opened to like 74, 75. If it gets to like 84, I mean, I may just take the under there and just be like, look, guys, you know, more power to you. If you go over the total here, that's on you. It's a bad bet on me. But but as of right now, no play for me on this. I mean, more than two statisticians, you're talking to two members of two fans of the Big 12. 111 is like a Tuesday for us. <laughs> <laughs> It used yeah. to be uh, times are yeah, changing. It used to be a Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, times are changing here. Uh, no play for me. The model says Alabama minus 14. So I'm passing. Uh, my model doesn't do totals. It, quick education corner. In general, unders are a better play than over. Why is that? People like to take the over because they want to see points. Uh, so more people gravitate towards the over. The numbers are usually shaded over. Um, a lot of sad people this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in general, take unders and this game i would not recommend an under i don't care what the number is I mean, right, you'd have to right, give me a yeah. hundred maybe even i don't even know if I, i'd probably take under 100 but I mean, you'd have to give me a crazy number I, with this team Ole miss can put up points in a hurry their defense is better uh, than it you know than it was last year but yeah I, I, this is one where uh, you know if, you, if you're looking for some fun take the over i guess i can't really recommend taking over a crazy high number like that but this does remind me of some of those old big 12 games where i remember some games involving tech involving west virginia involving baylor where the totals were up in the 70s and we would just laugh at people and say just take the over like don't or oh you was in a couple of them and there were just, just take the over like you think it's a lot and all of a sudden there will be 60 points at the half and you'll be like why didn't i take the over i'm only three touchdowns away or something like that so yeah. I'm not saying take the over, but I'm saying don't take the under, not in this game. <laughs> uh, the other big SEC game, Arkansas at Georgia. Georgia is a 19-point favorite. As good as Arkansas looked this year, that is that laying a lot of points. Of course, I've got Georgia as the number one team uh, in my rankings. Jared? Uh, yeah, no, no play for me here. I just – Arkansas is very good at what it does, but the problem is, is I think Georgia may be the best at what – Arkansas does I don't think it's a good matchup for them uh but again no play this game could get ugly and fairly low scoring or vice versa Georgia could get way out ahead and Arkansas makes it respectable at the end so so no play for me here either of those two options that Jared just listed are attractive enough for me to go ahead and make an official pick and take all of those points I do think this is the week where we figure out like, okay, who's actually the front runner in the sec and by extension, the country, because we're going to see some really good play with this game and the previous game, Bama will miss. Um, I think I'm going to trust that Arkansas puts up just enough of a fight that they don't get blown out of Georgia. (laughs) I like where your head's at. It's not a play for me. It's a slight lean, but not an official pick. The model thinks it should be 17 and a half. So at 19, it's getting a little value. Not enough for me to jump on officially. I'm really interested to see both this game and the previous one. Kind of like you said, does Alabama and Georgia Day just run away? Do they they destroy these two teams? Are they close? A lot to learn here, but not a play for me on either one. Now, what could be fun is if Alabama and Georgia just decide to play each other this week. (laughs) and just try to outdo each other. I mean, I don't know. I don't think they really have any beauty pageant points here not like in the old you know bcs system maybe but uh uh, they both have a chance to really make a statement this week against two teams that i don't think anybody was really expecting a ton from uh maybe a little more from Ole miss and arkansas but both teams have looked really good Ole miss and arkansas um like i said have a huge chance to move up in the rankings in in my book this week Uh, a less exciting sec game uh tennessee at missouri missouri is a three-point favorite jared I, I watched almost all of the Boston College Missouri game last week, and uh, my expert analysis is Tennessee just run the ball up the middle every single time, and you will have lots of success. 
never, never, Missouri never recovered from that big game against Kentucky. <laughs> we talked about that weeks ago, right? That that was the yeah, big game. That, that was it. To, and that was it. That they was had it. their chance and they failed. It's all downhill from here. I lost with Tennessee last week. I'm back on the well again this week. I'm taking the three points. The model says it should be a pick em. I don't think either one of these teams are very good. This is a clear case of I'm getting a field goal uh, in a game that who the heck knows what's happening, so there's value. And so I will take that, and in the long run, that's going to lead to a profitable world for us. Another team in the SEC from the state of Tennessee, the game you have all been waiting for, UConn at Vanderbilt. UConn, oh, hold on, I, I got to set us up here first off. UConn played so bad to start the season. They took over last place in my rankings by a long shot, by a margin that I thought might be insurmountable. Last week is beating Wyoming for most of the game, almost comes up with the W. Vanderbilt, on the other hand, gets beat so bad that they have fallen in, in not just my rankings, in almost everybody's rankings, into just inconceivable depths for a power five team, for an SEC team, a game that my model made Vanderbilt minus 22 a week ago after last week alone. And that has dropped 10 points. The actual on Vanderbilt minus 14 heavyweight matchup of the week here. Jared, take us away. Yeah. So I let off the picks by saying, you know, I was sitting there the whole second half of the Notre Dame. Notre Dame game saying more, more, more. The only game I was doing that more with was the Georgia Vanderbilt game. And I was saying, I wanted Georgia to get to a hundred, man. I wanted them to make They could Vanderbilt. have if they wanted to. Yes. <laughs> guys I, are sadists. <laughs> I, I wanted Vanderbilt to look so, so, so bad to drive this number down as, as much as they possibly could. You, you alluded to 22. We hadn't talked about this beforehand. I, I, I was saying that like, I was fine with laying anything up to three touchdowns at Vanderbilt. And this came out and it was 14. And I'm thinking, oh, this is great. So official play for me here, I'm laying the 14 with Vanderbilt. I think UConn is, I mean, one game aside, I think they are very, very, very bad. And this is like the game where Vanderbilt says, you know that whatever shellacking we took to Georgia, we're going to exert all of our demons at this game, you know, against a very bad team at home. Um, I, I have no problem laying 14 points here. So I watched a high, a Vanderbilt offense highlight video of the game last week. It didn't take long. It was only a couple of minutes. Yeah. I'm surprised it was that long. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they, they threw in some fun Georgia things too, which mm-hmm. I think added the padding, but like, uh, so Vandy five first downs last week and watching the play five first downs, Watching the plays, like two of them were miracles because the quarterback dodged a freight train that was a Georgia defensive lineman, got out of contain, and then made a spectacular play after that. So really should have been three first downs to Georgia's, what, eight, nine touchdowns? I, I've lost count. I, they it, probably just scored again, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Godspeed, Jared. I Thank do you. not envy your position. Hey, hey so, look, I'm I'm here to do the things that the other people don't want to do. I'm going to take the 16 points of Boston College, and I'm going to lay the 14 points of Vanderbilt. Yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm here to ridicule you for it. <laughs> hey, I, it's it's a it's a no play for me. Like I said, my model says Vandy minus 12. It's crazy to me that my model only thinks Vanderbilt should be a 12 point favorite here. So it's an official pass, uh, Jared. I do think you're right from the eye test. I think that Vandy. Um, I, I'm not sure how much I buy exactly what you're saying with the revenge type thing. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, sometimes that backfires, right? So I don't know about that as right. much as I think there is a real thing about the team we're playing is much less good than the team we just played, right? They're going from literally the best team to literally the worst, worst. or second worst team. Yeah. Um, I think it's, and Vandy's not far from the worst, of course, but I do think that receivers being able to get separation offensive linemen being able to make blocks i think that's it's just gonna it, it's almost like you know if you were to go to the weight room and whatever type of exercise you were doing with a 50 pound weight and then you were going to go do with a 10 50 you might not have been able to pick up a 10 you're just flying through it and so i think yeah. this is just i think you're right i think vandy wins this one easily i'm i'm not playing it though just because the model says vanderbilt is so 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 bad um, but you're, you're probably right. I hope Vanderbilt has a therapist on staff. If they lose this game, they are going to need one. 
the, the, the funny thing is, I think they do. They're doing a lot of things differently uh, this year with a new coach, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I don't know how to take that one. Uh, that's for next week. Yeah, yeah, a couple, yeah. yeah, exactly. A couple of Big 12 games. Texas is a four and a half point favorite at TCU. The total is 66 and a half. So I'm interesting stat today about TCU the week before and the week after they play Texas. They tend to play pretty poorly the week before. They tend to play pretty poorly the week after, but they beat Texas. If you haven't been uh, hearing some of this drama around Texas leaving for the SEC, there's been the whole TCU is seven and two against Texas uh, since joining the conference. So TCU's kind of owned Texas lately, despite not playing well before and after. So interesting matchup here. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, Jared, what do you got for us? I'm taking the under 66 and a half here official play from me. I think this got out a little bit too far with the 70 points that, that Texas put up against Tech. Uh, you know, TCU's defense did look great, but I, I trust Gary Patterson. As you alluded to, TCU's had a lot of success against Texas. Uh, I understand different coaches and everything uh, at Texas now, but uh, I, I still think that this can comfortably come in under the 66 and a half number. I'm surprised I don't have a thought on this game. This is always a like a marquee one for the Big 12, but I'm just like, nope, too too distracted by the game in Stillwater. Right. Uh, it's a pass for me. The model says Texas, as good as the model thinks Texas is, the model says Texas minus six. Hmm. The fact that TCU plays them well, um, yeah. I don't know if that means anything or not. So I, I'm just, I'm staying away from it as well. I'm kind of like you, Jack. I'm surprised I don't really have much more thinking on this one. Texas looks a whole lot better with the, you know, new quarterback in. Yeah, Thompson. He hasn't, yeah, Thompson's looked great. Uh, I said that from the start, right? I said that watching him in mop-up duty against Arkansas, he looked really good. That's why I took them against Rice. Should have taken him last week. Um, looks really good with him. Um, TCU hasn't looked really good. So, I mean, the eyes say take Texas, but the math doesn't. And that kind of worries me a little bit. And so, because the math doesn't say strongly take Texas, I'm passing. I may regret that uh, come Sunday. Uh, another Big 12 game, Tech at West Virginia. West Virginia... Uh, as a seven point home favorite. What do you got, Cousin Jared? Official play for me here, I'm laying the seven points with West Virginia. It's really twofold. Number one, this is a really tough spot. Um, going and getting 70 hung on you and then going back, hitting the road, playing at West Virginia. It's a tough place to play to begin with. West Virginia, you know, we've kind of talked about Oklahoma probably uh, not as, as great as definitely not as great as we thought they were to start the season. Um, but I think West Virginia still has a lot of um, optimism coming out of that game against Oklahoma. Uh, the second thing is, that score was 70 to 35 last week, but all of Tech's points almost exclusively were explosive plays. And y'all, you two don't need me to tell you that explosive plays are not nearly as repeatable as an efficient offense. So um, I, I think Tech's ha Tech has some some underlying issues here. So I'm going to lay the seven points with West Virginia. Yeah, And and, and furthermore, like it, it, it's a rough trip to go to Morgantown, but I think Lubbock to Morgantown is the longest Big 12 trip. Yeah, it's got to be awful. Yeah, it's a it's a brutal one too, and not major airports, you know, for either one of those uh, locations. You know, you're flying from Lubbock probably to DFW. You're flying from DFW to Pittsburgh, and then it's like a two hour bus ride from Pittsburgh into Morgantown because there's no major nice. airport near there. Yeah, it's that's horrible travel. Um, I do I have implemented differentiable home field advantage. Uh, West Virginia gets as much as my model can give it for home field because it is a very tough place to play. It's a tough place to travel to. Um, my model still says West Virginia minus seven and a half. So it's a pass from me. Uh, Tech had looked really good with all of its advanced metrics early in the season. And then last week happened. So I don't know what to make of it. I don't think the model knows what to make of it. So it's a pass from me. I am really interested to watch this game and see how it unfolds. If we get the Tech of last week, I think the model is going to start saying some of that early stuff uh, might have just been some good luck. Um, if we get the tech from old, they're going to keep this thing close. So I don't really I blame know Houston. either of these teams. Yeah, he, the Houston one was, um, they look great against Houston. Uh, but uh, one last Texas school to talk about, UNLV at UTSA. UTSA is a 21-point favorite. Jared? I'm, I'm not saying that I told you all so with UTSA against Middle Tennessee State a couple of weeks ago. I said that they had a lot of hype and they were going to come out and they were going to live up to it. And sure enough, they, they have. So I, I hope I'm slowly swaying you you guys to uh, UTSA side here. I was too mad at UNLV blowing that Iowa State game, even though I gave them as many points as I could possibly give them. I, that, that blinded me too much to not actually make a pick on this. If it plays out like it did, like you think it will, Jared, I'll probably pay more attention. 
I've got UTSA minus 25 and a half. So plot twist, official play on UTSA. My model there we go. UTS, yeah, my model is hitting UTSA all season. The model's coming around. Uh, they got, uh, they, they had three games. They weren't going to be favored in all season. They've already won two of them. There's only one other game that's difficult on the remaining uh, slate for them. Uh, they're climbing. I tweeted about this with the rankings. They're now the median team in my rankings. They're climbing up uh, slowly but surely. UNLV is really bad. So I'm, I'm laying the 21 with UTSA. So yeah, I'm, I'm, the model's coming around to him finally. Uh, New Year's six ball? New Year's six ball, anybody for UTSA? I'm going to say no, even if they run the table. I think there's going to be uh, other deserving yeah. teams. Uh, you guys uh, aren't schedule just isn't runner fans. Yeah, I, no, I'm not. <laughs> Up until recently, I just probably tried to play against them basically every week. Um all right, and that wraps us up for the rapid fire section. I'm not sure how rapid that was, <laughs> but now we are moving into the after dark games. If you are a night owl who loves college football, this is a segment for you. Let's get right to it. We're going to start off with New Mexico State at San Jose State. San Jose State is a 28 point favorite. Jack, uh, you, you, you grew up in New Mexico State. Uh, yeah, yes, as longtime listeners of the podcast know. <laughs> I have some New Mexico State ties. Uh, we, we, we might be the Internet's foremost New Mexico State football podcast at this point, because for some reason we talk about them every week. And I'm pretty sure there are actual like New Mexico State fans who don't talk about this team every week. Yeah, I actually interacted with a couple of them because we were trying to find that New Mexico State um one of their games, I don't remember which one it was early that we had a play on, or I had a play on uh, early on in the season. I think it was the UTEP, it was that week zero game. And uh, I, I tweeted out where to find the stream for that. And I had people tweeting at me about that, like the, the three New Mexico State fans that are out there. So hopefully all three of them are listening to this podcast as we are the official New Mexico State football podcast. We talk about them more than anybody. Uh, mm-hmm. No picks on this one for anybody. <laughs> the model's pretty pretty close to it. Uh, it was 28. It's actually down to 27 now. The model says 26. Uh, interesting note that I will say, the model has said to fade San Jose State all three weeks since that opening week zero win mm-hmm. that we locked in. That was pretty easy. Uh, it's The model's 3-0. So every time it has said against San Jose State, um, it has been correct. San Jose State just has not looked that good. Um, mm-hmm. So if you are looking for something, I would have the slightest of wins to New Mexico State, but man, it's really tough. Uh, to back a team that is that bad. Uh, But moving on to games that you might actually care about, Washington at Oregon State. This line opened somewhere in the Washington minus three to four range. Middle of the day, it dropped below the key number of a field goal down to two and a half, two, I I saw two. By this evening, it was already out to Oregon State minus two and a half. All I'll say is how the mighty have fallen at Washington. They got the win last week and still no respect coming into this week at the game at Oregon State. Jared, what do you got? This is this is a game I had my eye on for this week. I was like, you mentioned it opening at, at Washington laying three points. That was exactly what I wanted. I wanted to get the field goal with Oregon State here. Um, I think I'm 3-0 and on Washington games this year. Um, I had the under in the Michigan game and the Arkansas State game, and then I uh, covered with Cal last week against them. Um, so I really wanted to get that field goal with um, – Man, just blank on the team that we're talking about. Oh, my Oregon goodness. State. Oregon State. Yeah, I really want to get the field goal with Oregon State. So I think people would think differently about Oregon State um, if they hadn't lost that first game to Purdue. So they actually made a quarterback change around halftime of that Purdue game. They actually played much better the second half. I think they would have won if they would have started the game with him. Um, ever since they made that change, they've been playing really well. I think that Oregon State's going to put up 28 or 31 points, something like that in this game. And and there's no way Washington gets that. So I really wanted to take the field goal, but the more I started thinking about it, um, I, I, I think Oregon state has uh, the possibility of really blowing this game open. So official play from me here, I'm laying the two and a half points with Oregon state. Yeah, I'm with you. I wanted the three as well. Uh, I would have taken the two. I would have taken the one. Uh, my model says Oregon State minus one and a half, so it's an official pass for me, but I'm with you. I think the Oregon State is the right side here. I probably will also regret not playing Oregon State minus two and a half as well. Um, I just the, the model doesn't like it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna trust that. But I think you're right. I think that Oregon State is is the play here, especially with the, the new quarterback change. 
uh, an 8 p.m. Central start, so it just squeezes us into the After Dark segment. Auburn at LSU. LSU was a four-point favorite. Jared? I watch a lot of SEC football. I kind of like to consider myself a connoisseur. If you have a take on this game, good luck to you. I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Uh, I have no idea what to make of either team. I actually thought more of Auburn after the loss at Penn State, and then they came 45 seconds, as we already discussed, from losing to Georgia State. Uh, and then LSU, I mean, so – up and down, getting run over by UCLA. They looked a lot better the first half against Mississippi State, but then almost found a way to give that one away as well. So I, I am not touching this game, and I would highly advise nobody else to touch this game. I was yeah, excited I, for this because, you know, in pre-production, Jed was like, I have something to say about this game. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, boy, th th this is going to be great. And yeah. it was. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said last week I took Mississippi State. I said I wanted a field goal. I didn't get the field goal. I got two and a half. Needed the field goal. That would have gotten us to the to the, to the window on the push at least. Um, I I still don't believe in LSU. Um, my metrics say this is a peckham, so I am taking Auburn plus four. Mm. I have a take on last week. It's called trap game. Auburn coming off of Penn State. Auburn mm. looking ahead to LSU. So I think it's explainable. The model doesn't know that the model i'm not coding in right. schedules i'm not coding any of that stuff and it still says that auburn is the better team even giving lsu a fairly hefty home edge um, so it says take the four take the three and a half i think take the three just like we talked about last week i think under three is not not really a, a an advisable play but i like taking taking points here with auburn i think they're a much better team than lsu is um if i'm wrong again on lsu then, then that'll probably be the last time I, I fit them. Um, yeah. What comes after thrice? Fool me thrice, shame yeah, on exactly. everybody. And then I don't know what the word after thrice is. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Sweep so back to a game that no one is talking about. Old Dominion at UTEP. Uh, I have a play on this one. I imagine the guys have nothing I'm to glad say about you this do. One. Yes. Uh, I have Old Dominion plus five. My model says two and a half, so I'm taking the five with Old Dominion. UTEP is bad. Old Dominion, we talked about the Buffalo game earlier, uh, had a 89 or some odd percent expected win rate on that game last week. Old Dominion was the better team despite Buffalo getting out to that early lead. We backed Old Dominion two weeks ago against Liberty. And they got us to the window there as well. So I have no problems taking Old Dominion again. They, they've they, they, we backed them, they covered, we didn't back them. They not only covered, but should have won as two touch on dogs. I don't think UTEP's that good. So I say take the points with Old Dominion. Maybe sprinkle a little bit on the money line there uh, for your late night viewing pleasure. Next one, Arizona State at UCLA. UCLA, a three point favorite. Is anyone else concerned about me playing Pac 12 games? Or is that just me? <laughs> Yeah. For those of you on the, on the audio only medium, Jack is raising his hand right now. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I, have fun with the model. Um, I have zero idea what's going on in the Pac-12. I at Before we started, I thought nobody did, but apparently Jared has a pretty good thumbprint on this. I, only only on Washington. Oh, okay. You're on your own, Professor. The Pac-12 has been wonky. The ACC has been wonky. Um, they've also been bad. I, maybe that's correlated. Um, I don't really like either conference. When I saw the line for this one, usually the minus three, I was shocked. I don't think Arizona State's that good. I think UCLA is. Um, there are questions about DTR. He got hurt last game. I assume he plays. Anytime you have an injury and then you come back and throw a touchdown pass in that game, you're probably okay seven days later. You might not be okay the next day. You might not be okay two days later. I'm thinking you're okay seven days later. If he's not in, then that becomes a, a tough situation. But I don't want to wait and find out because I might lay three and a half on this game, might lay four, mm -hmm. but the model only says five. So once it gets beyond, if it gets to four and a half, it's, it's definitely a stay away because uh, you've lost all your edge there. But I don't think Arizona State is that good. I faded Arizona State uh, successfully multiple times this season. Tried it again last week. Apparently the, the line is Colorado. Apparently... <laughs> You can fade Arizona State, but not when they not when he gets to Colorado. That's just too, yeah. a bridge too far. It makes sense. I've learned that lesson. Uh, but I'm very comfortable taking what I think is a pretty good UCLA team against what I think is a very overrated Arizona State team. Mm -hmm. And then wrapping us up, another island special, Fresno State yes. at Hawaii. 
Hawaii, uh, a 10 and a half point underdog at home uh, to a pretty frisky Fresno State team. Uh, Cousin Jared, what do you got for us? Yeah, so your, your last point perfectly. I think Fresno State's really frisky. And I was, I mean, I was this close uh, to, to taking Fresno State here and, and laying the points. I, I don't think... I don't think Hawaii is very good. At the beginning of the season, I thought they might have a chance to get to a bowl game. I, I'm not sure if they're going to get to that now. Um, but what's holding me back on this is I, I watched a lot of that San Jose State-Hawaii game a couple of weeks ago. And not having any fans in that like constructed stadium in the parking lot on their campus is super weird. I mean, it's it's a very strange vibe. It, it feels like a high strange... school stadium that they didn't let fans into. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's just, it's so awkward. And so I, I'm just, I'm not, this sounds probably sounds like a really dumb reason. Uh, you, you know, y'all mentioned some stuff, uh, regretting some bets that y'all aren't taking right now. I'm probably going to regret not laying the 10 and a half points of Fresno state here, but it's just a super creepy vibe in that place. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not touching any games in that stadium until at least there's some fans back and maybe it feels a little bit more normal, but it's just an extremely awkward environment out there. I mean, the least they could do is pipe in some ukulele music, right? That would be good. Like some ocean waves. Do something. Something. It's a pass for me now. Um, It's a nice little segue, actually, to wrap this up. I have a ton of other plays. They're all listed in the Google Sheet. Uh, Right now, I think I'm at 28 of them that I'm backing the model. The model... Struggled a little bit last week, but I I really think it's right on track. I think this week's going to be a big week. Got a lot of picks, got a lot of picks I like. If we didn't talk about them here, it's because we didn't want to run it on too long. And um, uh, some of them, there's just nothing to say. It's just this is what the model thinks, and so I'm back in the model. Um, Check back on the spreadsheet, though. This is one, uh, again, there's a lot of plays there that we didn't talk about. This one, if it gets to 10, I'm laying 10 with Fresno State. 10 and a half is tougher. The model says 12. So it's officially a pass right now. Uh, you mentioned it. And I wanted to talk about the same thing. Uh, I talked about using differential home field. I'm not sure how much overall it matters, but I'm using two and a half for Hawaii right now, which is what the standard home field is. Usually I would give Hawaii a full three points because the travel is more difficult. And so they have a little bit more of a home edge. You get the Texas Techs of the world. You get the West Virginia's of the world. You give those teams three, maybe some of the stadiums, you know, Texas A&M where you got 100,000 people there, right? Uh, maybe you give those teams three. Hawaii would be in that boat. The travel's still weird, but the fans aren't there. And that made it for a weird atmosphere. I don't know what to give for home field for that. If I drop that down a little bit, it likes Fresno State a little more. I just don't know what to make of it. Of it. Like you said, they had very little home edge in that first game against San Jose State. Fresno State's a pretty good team. So like I said, check back on the spreadsheet. If that gets to 10, I'm laying the 10. Uh, might, might lay the 10 and a half, but I just, the model only saying 12, I don't love that pick. So again, just a reminder, check out the Google sheet, lots of picks, uh, including a couple of picks from Cousin Jared there uh, on the sheet that we did not talk about here just for time concerns. Uh, we don't want to go on too long. And with that, that wraps us up for another episode of Picks with the Professor. Thank you for watching or listening whichever medium that you are on, please like and subscribe, rate and review. Again, we really appreciate that. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.